Women with Disabilities Victoria, Empowering Women. Women with Disabilities Victoria recognises the history, culture, diversity and value of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and acknowledges their elders past, present and emerging. Women with Disabilities Victoria acknowledges the sovereignty has never been ceded and supports reconciliation, justice and the recognition of the ongoing living culture of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. We are experts in our health. This video contains discussion of experiences in medical settings and stories about discrimination. If you or anyone you know requires support as a result of the content of this video, please contact Lifeline on 131114 for 24 hour support. Women with disabilities come from many different backgrounds and have many different life experiences. This video features six of our 12 lived experience experts, women with disabilities, sharing their experience accessing healthcare services. The women talk about actions that healthcare services can take to make their services and information accessible, welcoming and inclusive for women with disabilities. Renee. Kerry. Carlene. Sarah. Kate, Andrea. The experts will be sitting around tables in groups of three talking about health. Chapter 1. Barriers to access. Whose responsibility is access? Sarah, Andrea and Kate are sitting at the table. It's absolutely everybody's responsibility, right from the board of directors all the way to front of staff at the reception. So not just down to the medical professionals or someone with accessibility in their portfolio. I agree. I think it's the healthcare providers. It shouldn't be women with disabilities who have that responsibility to make sure services are accessible. Accessibility is not just about physical barriers. It's about a range of dynamic factors, including trust, power dynamics, relationships, safety, communications. I think it's really important when you're talking about accessibility to consider disclosure, making sure that there's a safe environment to disclose issues if you need to. What assumptions made by health professionals impact your access? I think the relationship between physical and mental health is poorly understood. Just because someone is distressed or upset in a medical appointment does not mean they have a mental illness. Yes, it needs to be addressed and considered, but you need to make sure you listen to the other concerns. I was in an emergency department quite a while back and because I am on wharf and it tends to have regular blood I had significant scarring on my arms. And the idiot doctor asked me, am I an inter intravenous drug user? To which I said, no, I'm on wharf and I'm blood thinners, which if she had read my chart, would have been much more easy and she would know what was going on with me. 